Hello everyone, welcome to this video from the How to Make a Game in Less Than One Hour series. And in this game we are using Unit 3D with the Universal Render Pipeline. As you can see I am set up in the, the project right now and this is a roulette game. So I create a project called Roulette and now Unity is preparing uh, the project for us to start working. It's worth remember, uh, Unity is completely free. Well, it's free if you earn less than 100,000 a year, or if you are making this game for someone or for some company that earn less than 100,000 a year. If you are a student, if you are studying Unity, there is no problem at all. You probably heard some problems in the past about Unity charging uh, for using the, the engine, but that was fixed and even so this influenced like just a, a, a very small number of people. So now the project is open and I wrote at the beginning that there will be no coding. So there will be no writing coding because all the program, all the coding, we are using an asset called Playmaker that you can find in the Unity Asset Store and you need to install in your project. To install the asset, you need to go to Package Manager and you will, after you get Playmaker, you will, will write Playmaker, you will find Playmaker and you will download if you didn't download it yet and install Playmaker. They will show these files. You need to import these files. These are the installation files. So after you import, import that, we'll open a window asking for installation. You just install. There is no need to backup because it's a new project. And you can confirm everything and finally install Playmaker in this project so we can start working. It's worth to remember I didn't start the counter yet because we are starting the counter when the project is ready to start. So at this point, we are still uh, importing Playmaker. So as soon as Playmaker is finished installing, um, you can start. Well, it seems everything is good. Yeah, all the windows are there. The project is ready here. Um, just to keep things organized, I will create a folder uh, in the main structure uh, called um, Roulette, yeah. Um, and after this, I think we are good to start the timing. Yeah, let's start here. Let's go. So, first thing to do um, is save the scene. It's always good to, to save uh, what we are doing. So, let's give this scene a name. I will put Roulette, yeah, why not? And this is a 2D game we need to start creating 2D elements inside. So on Unity, you go to UI and then you can create a new image, as you can see. So for Unity to show images, you need to create something called Canvas. And Canvas, it's a canvas that will contain all 2D elements for your game. So the image we just created is that small square and the canvas is the bigger uh, square. You can see wireframe. So uh, what we want now, the canvas is in constant pixel size and that's not very good because if you change the resolution, we'll change the size of all images. So we want to choose a scale with screen size and that will keep the proportion all the time. Let's change the resolution for 1080p. I think that will, will be good for us to work. And now doing that, we see our images kind of far. So we are moving back to the center of screen and it's still quite small. So let's get bigger, um, 500, I think, 500 per, by 500 pixels. Yeah, that's better, it's a good size. And now we are using this square to be our roulette. So we didn't need to change the image now. Let's start coding and we can work with the graphics later. Let's open the Playmaker editor. You can find on Playmaker editor. We will open a new window. Um, I will put here on the bottom side of the screen. To keep things organized, I will create an empty uh, new object. I will call logic, that where I will put all my logic on, on the game. And I will create a new empty under this logic that I will call spin, because this object will hold the, the code for the roulette to spin. 
So to that, you click with your right uh, button uh, and create a FSM, a finite state machine. And this machine is, is made by several states. The first state uh, is the first to be called and you can put actions on each one of these states. So now we want to the relate to rotate. So I will write rotate and we have an action for rotation is called rotate. So you click there and we need to configure this action. First thing we need to tell who is rotating, which the game object will rotate. So you click there, you choose a game object and you can just drag the image you just create to that point and is there. After that, we need to choose a X of rotation. And in this case will be the Z X, like the X from my eyes to the screen. And we need to put a value. Let's try 10. And you want to turn on the per second attribute because the speed will link it with time and not with processing. So we'll run the same speed on a computer or cell phone, for example. Um, I think we're good to test. Hit play and let's see. Yeah, it's working, it's rotating, but it's kind of uh, slow for a roulette. So we need to increase this value. Let's put 100. Yeah, that's better, but this still is low. So let's put more like 800. And I want to just rotate in the other direction. So I will put minus 800 uh, and let's hit play. Yeah, that seems good. So the roulette is spinning. The problem is, is the only action that states, so this will spin forever. So this should stop after some time. So this, for this, we are using a action called wait. And what we'll do? Well, we'll wait. We need to tell the action how long we wait. And after you wait, we'll do what? We'll go to another state. So we create a transition, finish, and then go to another state. So what's happened? We rotate, we wait um, three seconds, for example. And after three seconds, we will trigger that transition. It's called it finished. And we'll go to the next state. Let's see. It's rotating. One, two, three. Go to the next state and stop because there is nothing on that shadow. And that's good, but the physics is not right there yet. This should um, start to slow and after some time we stop. So we need to still rotate in that state, but we'll stop it after some time. So we will copy this action. So copy action and we will paste this, paste this action on this channel. And we don't want to just keep minus 800 all the time. This should go from minus 800 to zero. So we need to animate that value. And for that, we are call action, call it interpolated. So this action will interpolate values from minus 800 to zero. We need to fill that in. So it will be minus 800 to zero and the time that will happen. Um, maybe two seconds, I think is good. And this animation, we will create a variable to hold these new values and I will call this speed. So now I have this animation. I will put this animation in the speed on the Z axis. I, so now we can see speed there and select that. So we'll rotate and we'll go to the next state and this velocity, the speed, will go down. Let's see. It's rotating, go to the next channel and stop. Oh, that's quite good actually. So it's running fast and stops. Now we have another challenge here. So computers are very good for doing things and they will repeat this like as much times we play, but will be always the same. It's going from minus 800 and stopping in two seconds. So this roulette will always give the same value. So anyone playing this, I, they probably will guess what's happening and they will always win. So we need some variation here. It doesn't need to be minus 800 or, or three all the time. We can change these values for random numbers. And every time this roulette runs, we'll have different results. So for that, we have action called random. Random float is the kind of number we are using now. 
and I moving up this random float and let's put a value here the speed will be something between minus 1000 and minus 600 so yeah I think we have a good range of values here and this will be the speed and we need to change the minus 800 for the speed so now the speed will be anything between minus 1000 and minus 600 and that's good let's copy this and paste below and let's change some let's put some values there like something between two and maybe five and let's give a name to that because we are already using speed so it will be a new variable and let's call it waiting so will be the time the roulette will be waiting until uh, stop okay and we change the value also inside the wait so we'll rotate for some time and we go to the next channel so speed is already there in rotate but now the animation is not always minus 800 this will be the speed is being created on the first state so let's test that so this is rotating at some random speed for random time oh that was fast and stop it work it let's try again is rotating yeah i think longer now and stop it hmm. that's good so now we have a game with a random roulette spinning um, we can start now to give some graphics to that let's work to make this look actually like a roulette i have some images i create on the internet so i will just create a new folder here call it um, images yeah why not and let's import that to that just select a drag inside our folder so unity will automatically import these images as you can see and we are applying this image on our white square let's do that so if you select the image and try to put on search image it's not working because this is basically a test texture for a 3d object and we need to transform that on a sprite in order to work on 2d elements so you can see sprite 2d and ui select that give apply and now this is ready to be assigned to an image so just drag and yeah we have our roulette there and we can also change the name to roulette let's keep everything organized you will see the importance of that in the future and i will create a new element a border and i will also drag an image to that so let's do that okay that's quite nice let's have a look yeah it's rotating as you can see and looks like a roulette now so now we are ad uh, adding more elements to our roulette usually you have texts or numbers or something that will give prizes for someone so i will create uh, empty in this roulette and as you can see is uh, a child of the main roulette what means this will rotate with, with the roulette all the time so and uh, child of that i will create a text unity call it text to match pro it's first time we are using so there's a window to import some basic elements um, now we have our text in the middle of the roulette we are putting on the right place let's adjust the color so we can see what's happening and also the size so let's a little smaller so it's very basic adjustments here you can think it in however you want with that and just write something to be in the right position on your roulette let's adjust the, the size yeah I think that's good also it's quite big the the border so we are just getting smaller to fit inside the, the roulette cell and we, let's put a name here so I'll call center because in the center of the roulette and we have a child of that that is the text I will create another element and that will be an image I actually don't want this image but I want a collider a collider will be something that well collides and what we will do we will put another collider on the roulette and we will detect when this cell go through that collider so let's put some transparency so we can see what's happening through that 
And when we work with Collider, we need to add a, a property, a component. It's called, well, Collider. Let's use a Box Collider 2D. And the Collider is quite small when we use it, so we want to adjust that to be bigger. So we will not miss that when the roulette is rotating. Let's do more or less the size of the cell. It's quite easy to adjust. Just click on the dots on the edges and yeah, the collider is done. I use it a box collider 2G in this case. There are several types of colliders, but we don't need anything more complicated than that. Now we have the collider. We can just turn off the image because we are only use the collider. Okay, so we have our element and now I will create another element, another image uh, outside the roulette because I don't want that to be rotating with the, the roulette and I will also use a collider on this one because I want to detect the collisions on this point. Um, let's adjust the size, so just on the top of the roulette, that will be the place where will be the winning result. And let's call again, box collider, it's still small, let's adjust that. Would be nice if it is appear just the size of the image, but yeah. We want to this collider send information to us, this will trigger an action. So in this case, we want to turn on that it's a trigger. So this will trigger an action for us to follow. So, and we will add another component that will be a HD bar 2D uh, and not dynamic. It's, this can be kinematic because it's not animated. So in this case, we need these two components for that to work. So this collider will detect when someone hits and will send this information uh, for us. So for that we want a new piece of logic. I will create a new uh, object here, a new empty. And I will call that um, roulette um, reading. Okay, let's go to Playmaker and add a FSM. And what we are doing here, we are reading the information is being triggered from that collider. So for that, let's write trigger and there is, yeah, Trigger to the event. We will use this action, and there is a message, a message telling we need the HG bar to the and collider. We already did that. We need to drag the game object. We want to get the trigger there. So now there are some configuration we need to do on this action. So send event. We want to send event to store collider. We also want to store collider. So first thing, let's send event. Um, let's call hit. Every time um, a collider hit, we we'll send event, call it hit. And let's start, who hit, who hit me, I want to know. So let's call who hit it. Uh, nah, that seems strange. Let's call who hit, yeah. Uh, let's create that variable. So what's happened every time someone hits, we'll send this event, hit, and we'll record who hit. We need a channel after that after someone hit. So we will link that to the next channel. And in that channel, uh, what I want to do with the information I got. One thing I want to do is show this information on screen. Let's get the name of who hit. And there's an action called get name. So the game object is who hit. I just discovered from the last state. And we will store this name as a new variable called um, hit name. Why not? So now we have the name in a variable. We want to show this on screen. And for that, we need to create a text on screen. So what we will do now, we go to Canvas, UI, and you will create a text, text match pro. Let's put this text somewhere I can see. Um, let's change the color so it's more visible and make bigger. Yeah, if change for two lines, you can just increase the size. Yeah, this will do for now, just for us to see the, the information. So I want to put the name on this text. So I need an action for that, but Playmaker doesn't have action for text to mesh. So I will just lock my Playmaker view there. I will select the text and I will drag the text mesh pro property inside that action. And there's option to set property and there I will just select the property I want to change that will be 
text. I want to change the text of this text element. Select text and string is the variable we are changing. So now we have the option to give a value and the value will be the hit name. So now we are getting the name and when go to next stage, I get the, the hit name. This roulette is rotating all the time. I want this to be updating every time. So I will create a transition, a finish. So I wait in this to be finished and we'll return to the first stage to looking for a new collision, a new hit. And we'll keep it doing that. So let's see, it's rotating. Yeah, image, the name is there. It's not changing because we just have one element, one collider. And the name image, as you can see, is there. The collider is called image. So it's detecting, it's working. Um, now we need uh, more elements and you need to organize this so in the future we can easily change the, the names or the values of the roulette without having to change element by element. For example, I want to write just in one place what I want for itself, for example on center, and what I write will be the text on the screen and also will be the collider name. That way um, will be much easier to change things in, in the future. So let's do that. I put a FSM uh, Playmaker on center. And the first thing I want to do is the text showing will be the name of center. So let's get the name of this center object because I will change that in the future. Um, there's an action is getting name, but it's not like get own name. First thing we need to know who is the center? There's an action is get owner. So this will get the game object who holds this FSM. And we'll create a variable to hold this game object. So I will call owner. Now we can get the name of the owner and we will create a new variable name. Yeah. So now we have this name. We want to put this name on the cell in the roulette, that cell. So this will be updated. Um, to do that, let's go uh, to a next state and we will give uh, uh, the text mesh pro inside the roulette a new value. To do that, let's lock our playmaker view, go to the text you want to change and we will drag the text mesh pro to the actions and set property in this case. So we are changing like we did before, the text and string is the variable type, which will be the string, the name we just got. So we just got the name and we will change this string name for the string we just got on the previous channel. The other thing we want to do is change the name of the collider. For that is set name and we will select the collider, let's call it image drag it there and will be the same name. So when this collides, we will get the correct name on the screen. And now we can just change this value, for example, 50, let's see. It's rotating, yeah, we can see 50 on screen, that's good, and we can see 50 also on the roulette. So this is working and we can now populate our roulette with more of this. So we don't need this image here on the top of the collider reading. And let's duplicate some values here to get this going. I will just hit Ctrl D to duplicate that and fill some values here one by one. Okay, I think we have the right amount. Uh, what you can do, we are doing a linear um, interpolation. So you can put L and between zero and 360. Yeah, and this distributed linearly in, in the roulette. Um, as is going from zero to 60, 360, we have one repeated value. So I will delete, delete one, okay. And now is everything 100, but we'll read the values from that text. So let's adjust with values here. Let's put numbers here, that's easier. But from your game, you can put uh, prizes. 
a cat, a dog, just write anything you want here and what you write on each one of these uh, game objects will appear on the roulet. Just mind the size, the cells are not too big, so depending what you are writing, you need to adjust the, the text size or the size of your roulet. Um, yeah, I think is that, well, just one number more. Yeah, we can test this. Let's hit play. Yeah, it's working, not bad. Oh, zero in the first time, that wasn't good. At least it's working. So what I want now is a button to, to play that as much as we want, not going to the play button side unit because in the game, we need a way to the player to rotate the roulette. So I'll go to, com to canvas, I will create a button, button text mesh prop. Um, let's move the button to uh, a better position and we can also change the name, let's call it play. Um, also, it's a small button, we can adjust the size of the button. So go to button, click on the button game object and we can put 60 here, yeah, bigger. And the, now the text is small, so we can increase the size of the text. Yeah, I think that's better. And to keep everything organized, let's give a name to this button, a very original name, button play. Okay. Yeah, that will do. So what we need right now is we need to know when someone press this button, so the roulette will rotate. So we will change the spin we did before. When we are coding, we are always adjusting and change stuff. So we are creating a new channel and this new channel will wait for the button being pressed. For that, we have an action. So you can just write button and there is a, UI button on click event. So we want to send the event when someone clicks. There's a message telling this is not a button. It's okay because we need to drag the button there and we will send an event and we can give the name we just want. So play is a good name and go to the next state. So when someone hits play, we'll give a random value, wait a random time and the roulette will stop after some time. We may want to do that as much as we want. So let's put a new action finished and let's return for the first state that we wait for the button to be pressed again. That way we have a looping going between these channels every time someone hits play. Let's see that. Okay, is it stop? Is working? Hit play? Yeah, rotate it. We rotate and stop it. You can see the first state is green and is waiting for someone to press play. Now we press play again, go to the next state, is rotating, stop it and go to the first state again. Yeah, we can do that forever now. Oh, zero again. It's not my day for playing this game. Okay, now we have this working. We still have time to do something more like a roulette game. For example, this background is not great. And I have a background I create also on the internet that we can put there. For that, we need a new image. So I will create a new 2D image inside UI image. And it's quite small, so I need a bigger image. Let's try 1024 by 1024. Unity likes power of two textures. So I will start with that. And we will drag my image inside search image. As you can see, the proportion is not right, but that's not a problem. We can, oh, is it strange? Oh yeah, 1024. Yeah. So now we are using scale to adjust my image with my roulette. Can you see we have a small roulette in the back? It's a steel roulette. So let's use scale to try to get everything in place right now. Yeah, a little bigger yet. And we probably need to also scale on the Y axis. So yeah, mm, no, yeah. I think that's almost good, mm, nice. Yeah, this looks like a, a casino. Uh, still what's kind of not good is the button play, it's wrong position and the text is not easy to read. So let's first work with, uh, with the button. 
let's put in front of this guy like he is playing and we can rotate to be aligned with the, the desk yeah and we can also change the color maybe a, a green shade like a casino mm -hmm. I don't know I think yeah and maybe the text white hmm now it's difficult to read mm. let's put white and get a darker shade of green on the top yeah I think that's more or less good um, we can also if we want get the color of the green of the casino yeah it's good it's kind of yeah I think darker will do yeah, I think that will do for now so we have the play button on that part and the text is difficult to read so let's move this text down and we also can change the color of the text more like a golden we have a lot of gold in this image but it's too difficult to read so let's put a background on, on this text uh, let's create a new image go to canvas UI image and this image will be behind the text so we need to change the position on, on the hierarchy yeah let's adjust the size the position hmm, more or less there I think that's quite good and let's put black and we also can put some transparency there yeah that's easy to read i think that will do one thing you may want to do is put some rounded corners on on the image for that you need to click on the image and there we are selecting a sprite with rounded corners that if you are not seeing the rounded corners this is because you need to change it to slice it and adjust the pixels so yeah more or less like this hmm. i think that's good let's just centralize the text yeah um and the image a little up oh that's quite good let's the play We can play and we can see the casino. Yeah, five. Well, at least it's not zero. So what we can do now, this is a 2D game, but we can still give some motion here. For that, we would need to animate our camera. Uh, what happened is this canvas is linked to the, cam to the camera like uh, a screen space overlay it's good for health in games like a HUD in our case now we want to change to word space and we also need to tell which camera we are using otherwise the buttons will not work so we need to drag our main camera inside the event camera because this camera uh, will hold all the events in the game uh, now we did that our camera is kind of lost here you can see so we are moving the camera to the front of the panel and we cannot see because cameras in unity have a, a range we need to increase the far range in order to see this from from far so instead of 1000 let's put 5000 and now we can see so we don't want this bleeding on the sides so let's get the camera closer and centralize it with the roulette in this case yeah can you see some bleeding is not good i think some yeah more or less like that's good uh oh we have this zoom on that so yeah now we don't have zoom and let's get a little closer yeah that's good enough from our view and what we want to do is i want when hit play the camera will get closer to the roulette and to, to see what's happening and after that we'll return to the initial position for that we will do a new piece of code let's create a new game object object called camera animation and let's create a new finite state machine on playmaker to do this code for for us first thing i want to record is the camera initial position because i will need to use this uh, every time it plays so i will use action called get position and 
I will get position from who? From the camera. So drag the camera on the place and this position will be saved as a vector, will be a variable vector and I will call any pos, the initial position. So first thing I recorded that position. After that, I will go to a next state. So I create a transition, finish it and create this state. So what I want here, I want to the camera to start to moving, but only after the button play was hit. So what I will do now, I will waiting for the button and we have action for that, that's on click event. So someone, someone click, we will send this uh, new event that will start to animate the camera. So which button is the same button play and we will send an event called, well, play. After that, we have the transition play and we will go to a next stage where we will do the animation. For the animation, there's a series of actions. Uh, they are called twin and they are really good to do animation. So twin and we want to change the camera position. So twin position that will do. And who we are doing the twin, the animation is the camera. So we will drag the camera to the game object and we need to tell the type of animation and will be a local offset. We want to offset the camera uh, a value. So let's try uh, a value here, for example, 300, maybe. And after this animation is done, we finish it. So we put a transition finish here and go for a new stage where we can return for our initial stage, for example. So I will create a new transition here, finish it, and I will return to the stage with the button reader. So we are, will be waiting for the play again. Let's test this. Yeah. Okay, is waiting for the play. Let's hit play. Hmm, work it. It's a little fast, but yeah. Uh, let's hit play again. Mm, we have a problem. Each time is getting closer and the button is disappearing. So first thing I remember was too fast. So let's adjust that instead of one, let's put three, for example. And now we need to use the initial position that I remember I recorded. To do that after play, um, we can call the initial position. So I will use that empty state. And after call the initial position, I will go to the animation. So here I will make a twin. So I'll copy this twin position and paste to this channel. So is the camera, that's fine. And current position, that's also fine. What's happening here is the options will be word position because the camera is saved as a word position, initial position. If you go to the first state, not you, you here. Yeah, we can see we have initial position and the space word or space coordinate is word position. So this will do, and instead of three, this can be quite quick. So half second will do. So we'll adjust the camera, we'll do the animation and we'll go back. Let's test. So we hit play, it's not moving because the camera was in the initial position, it's fine. But now when we hit play, yeah, return to position and approximate. Not bad at all. Look, less than 40 minutes. We still have time for a coffee or a tea if you prefer. Instead of changing the video title, I decided to leave it in less than one hour because in the next videos, I don't guarantee that will be that much time left. Speaking of future videos, whether they exist or not will depend on the participation of my audience. Yes, you who are watching now are my audience, so please don't forget to like the video, share and subscribe to this channel. And all participation is welcome. If you want to see the creation of a particular game, just write in the comments and I will study the possibility of making a video for it using Unity and Playmaker. I understand that Playmaker is a paid asset, but I would like to highlight two important points. The first is that it's much faster to learn than programming and writing code. And once you learn it, it's also much faster in production and for prototyping, which is super important for any game's initial development. The second point is that when you buy an asset from Unity Asset Store, that asset is yours forever. 
I have Playmaker for over six years and use it in all my projects. Think of as an investment. Just to give you an idea, I was the main unit developer in a large London company for six years, practically without writing code. And last but not least, don't forget to check out the description below with links to Unit, Playmaker and my website, where you can find all files I used for this tutorial and I link to check out the finished game in your browser. That's it, see you in the next video.